Dr. Ted Wimslow, the director of the Ohio Department of Health, believes that electronic health records are the biggest change in healthcare in the past 50 to 100 years. Here, he describes how health information exchange among doctors, hospitals, labs, and others will transform healthcare in Ohio. What we're trying to move for as a state is to have a health information exchange that ultimately will let all these systems talk to each other so we can have a central repository of information that can then be shared with whoever needs that information. In my system, the way that it worked was, for instance, uh, if I referred someone who needed counseling to a clinical psychologist, that clinical psychologist wasn't on site but was connected electronically to me, so as soon as the visit was over, I got the electronic record, the add-on to the record, before the patient got home. I already knew what had happened during the visit and any recommendations that were made. So if they said, well, their depression has improved, uh, and you know, I looked at my record and it's been a month, but they say, well, we're still not getting the goal, uh, we'd like to consider some other options. One of those options is for me to adjust my dose of the antidepressant, you see. Well, I could make some decisions before the patient ever got home about how to treat them, contact the pharmacy if I want to bump the dose, and by the time the patient gets home, I can have emailed them so that they can actually receive that and go pick up their uh, higher uh, uh, prescriptive dose that I just gave. They used to happen in two to three weeks in the past, so I'd have to wait for a note to be dictated, have it be typed up, have it be sent in the mail to me, I'd have to pull a chart, I'd have to open the chart and review all the information, then I'd have to tell my nurse I want to do a refill, uh, but I want to do a higher level of, of medication, the nurse would call that into a pharmacist, we have to, that would take weeks to get that done, and I could do it in minutes uh, with an electronic record. So that connectedness allows us to make quick decisions that are very appropriate and good for people's health, and do it in a manner that gets us to the quality goal that we have which is getting people better faster if they have an illness or keeping them from sickness if I can do that by focusing on their wellness and health and, and do it in a way that for me takes minutes only. It doesn't take long. You have to have patients that understand the importance of allowing us to see others' information so that we can go ahead and make sure we have the proper information available to me so that I can share mine and I can get others. And that's what we're going uh, through right now is that whole discussion about well, what do we do with HIPAA, what do we do with protection of privacy and those things? How do we protect people's privacy but still share information with people who need that? we got to work through all those steps to protect patients' privacy but also make available useful information so we can make great decisions for patients that avoid duplication, avoid uh, overlap. Uh, old medications would be the most common example, but also protect the patient. For instance, if I have a patient who comes in with a knee that's sore, and I'm in my practice and I go ahead and do an x-ray and I say, gosh, a lot of de degeneration, you need to see an orthopedist. Well, what they'll do is go to the orthopedist office and the first thing they'll do if I'm not connected is x-ray them again, right? right? They do it all the time. And, and so these people are being exposed to <laughs> repeated x-rays. It happens with chest, it happens with all your other body parts too. If we're not connected electronically, there's that safety problem of getting exposed to things that you really would like to miss if you possibly could. And we can help them miss that by transferring good information to the other providers. Networks that are closed networks that have everyone connected are largely there, but still they have trouble exporting information out of their system. Ultimately, with our health information exchange, we hope to have all that available to organizations that can talk to each other with our interoperable uh, systems that we'll put in place. So to me, the electronic record is the biggest change in healthcare probably in the last 50 to 100 years, if you look at what's going to change the way health is delivered, that's going to have the biggest impact of anything we've ever seen. The problem is, it's change, right? And, and it's painful. And so all the docs I talk to go, oh my God, you've got to be kidding. And I'm going, keep focused on the end point. Don't get distracted by all the things happening on the way. Because it's hard work. It doesn't always work. There's a lot of headaches with it. There's a lot of decisions to be made. There's a lot of improvements you have to make along the way. But stay focused on the end point that you're trying to achieve, which for us will be the health information exchange. But then we get to reap the benefits of electronics. When I first started on electronics, I thought it was just there to like record my note of what I did. So I was kind of thinking, well, it's an expensive typewriter or something, I guess, because all it's doing is making sure everybody can read my note now instead of me scribbling notes. That is the least valuable part of what the electronic record does. All these 
uh, bits of data that we put in as we populate our record are useful to a variety of different people that are focused on trying to improve people's health. And if we make it available to everyone in large systems, then chances are patients will actually achieve better outcomes than they've ever achieved before. We'll do it at a cost that's going to be much more affordable. It'll be safer for patients. We're going to eliminate some of the dangers that are inherent in our current fragmented, siloed healthcare delivery system. And uh, I think what will happen is patients will know more about their health than they've ever known before. Then they'll take responsibility for their health. Then they'll make good decisions on their own because now we've got a highly educated, very engaged patient involved in controlling their own outcomes instead of me controlling how their health is going to turn out. And that can be great. Everyone gets to own their own health and understand it and drive it and direct it to where they want it to be. What we're seeking is value. You know, we're trying to get the best quality care we could possibly get at the lowest cost that's available. And what we're finding in some of the early experiments that are being done, especially with patients in the medical home, is that what they're reducing are ER utilization rates, hospitalization rates, 30-day readmits to the hospital. A lot of those things are very, very expensive. They provide no value to anyone, right? Because you just assume miss a rehospitalization. Right. And they're avoid so they're avoidable. And what we want to do is if our goal is to keep people healthy, and our goal is to keep people out of hospitals and out of those very expensive treatment centers, then we've got to be willing to send some, some of our money upstream to pay for the prevention side, right? And that's what the patient-centered medical home does, is takes better care of people in the community so they can avoid the complicated problems that land them in the hospital or in subspecialist offices. So, so believe me, hospitals and subspecialists sometimes uh, express some concern about what would happen if we were successful. I'm saying stay focused on the patient, stay focused on the patient, stay focused on what's good for the patient. If you stay focused on what's good for the patient, everyone agrees that we want to practice differently in a way that allows people not to have complicated illnesses, not to have avoidable complications, not to have unsafe things done to them. Uh, if they can miss it, let's all miss it. So, so our focus is to redefine what our goals are in healthcare, and that would be wellness and health, right? We now have a national uh, prevention policy that says, let's stop focusing on sickness and illness, and let's focus on wellness and health instead. Thank you to Dr. Wimslow for sharing his vision of a health information exchange that will improve the health of all Ohioans. The Ohio Health Information Partnership has started to sign up hospitals for Clinicing, Ohio's statewide health information exchange. To learn more about how the state of Ohio is building this interchange, visit www.clinicinc.org.